What do you think of when you hear the word methadone? Most people think of methadone only as a treatment for an opioid use disorder, for example, an addiction to heroin. But did you know that methadone can be given to patients during surgery as part of the anesthesia plan, even for patients without opioid use disorder? Having said that, it's still a controversial medication among anesthesiologists due to its side effects. My name's Max Feinstein, and I'm an anesthesiologist in New York City. And in this video, I explain the benefits and the controversy around treating intraoperative pain with methadone, a medication that has an FDA black box warning for respiratory suppression and life-threatening arrhythmias. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. Just a quick reminder that this is a YouTube video. It's not medical advice. If you need medical advice, you should talk to your doctor. Methadone is a medication that can be taken either by mouth or injected intravenously, and it acts on the mu opioid receptor, which is present on many cells throughout the body and is involved with mediating the perception of pain. Other opioids like fentanyl or hydromorphone also act on the mu opioid receptor, but they have other properties that make them act differently in a clinical setting. One of the defining features of methadone in particular is just how long it exerts its clinical effect for. That's actually the reason why it's used to treat opioid use disorder. So patients can go to a methadone clinic, take their methadone, and for an extended period of time, meaning 24 hours or longer, they experience the clinical effects of methadone. Those clinical effects include reduced cravings for opioids, for example, heroin or other types of opioids, and methadone also increases a patient's tolerance to other opioids. So if they do happen to use them, they're just not as effective and don't create that same euphoria that's involved with addiction. Somewhat ironically, methadone itself is actually quite addictive, which is why it has to be administered by an outpatient clinic and can't just be prescribed by a pharmacist at Walgreens and taken home. Because of its addictive potential, methadone is a Schedule II medication in the United States, which is the same schedule as other potentially addictive medications like fentanyl and hydromorphone, to name a few. In addition to its addictive potential, methadone has also earned several black box warnings from the United States Food and Drug Administration. Black box warnings are the most stringent warnings that the FDA puts on any medication. Methadone's black box warnings include respiratory suppression, which is not surprising because basically any other medication that's in the opioid class of medications can cause respiratory suppression. So not only is that an expected side effect, but it's also something that anesthesiologists are trained to deal with, and so we routinely manage patients who have some sort of respiratory compromise due either to medications that have been administered or other clinical circumstances. So it's expected and not a big deal to anesthesiologists, but definitely something to worry about in the outpatient setting. The other black box warning from the FDA is for QT prolongation, which has to do with the heart's electrical activity and can basically lead to arrhythmias or abnormal heartbeats that can be life-threatening. Methadone is actually one of many QT prolonging medications, so like any other medication, we have to keep in mind what a patient's EKG looks like before we administer it, and then we keep a close eye on their EKG as we administer the medication to make sure that there's not any problem that arises. Even when patients are unconscious under general anesthesia and not aware of anything that's happening to them during surgery, it's still important for anesthesiologists to treat pain during surgery because the body can still react to that pain. Some of those reactions include increased blood pressure and increased heart rate, which for some patients isn't a problem, but for patients who have heart disease or other types of medical conditions, this untreated pain can actually result in life-threatening conditions during and after surgery. For that reason, anesthesiologists take great care to make sure that patients' pain is controlled not only after surgery, but also during surgery. And that's where methadone comes into play. Because methadone acts on the mu opioid receptor, it's really effective in managing pain. It means we can give lower doses or even no doses of other pain medications that also come along with their own side effect profiles. In addition to acting on the mu opioid receptor, methadone also blocks activity on another receptor called the NMDA receptor. NMDA receptor activity is also implicated in the perception of pain, so blocking that activity, like methadone does, can reduce pain. So that's just another way that methadone is helpful for controlling pain in a way that's relatively unique among medications for pain control. 
The clinical effect time of methadone is highly dependent on the dose that's given. So when it's appropriately timed and dosed, methadone can provide pain control during surgery and even into the post-operative period in a way that is pretty uncommon among medications that relieve pain. The fact that methadone is a relatively long-acting medication is actually the basis for its controversy among anesthesiologists. The concern that some anesthesiologists raise is that methadone isn't necessarily predictable in terms of how long its clinical effect time is. And if one of the clinical effects is respiratory suppression, then of course you wouldn't want to send a patient home from the hospital while they still have a risk of respiratory suppression as a side effect from a medication. Just to be clear, the controversy is around the predictability of methadone, not just the fact that it causes respiratory suppression. Because anesthesiologists routinely administer medications that cause respiratory suppression, it's really just a question of, are we monitoring the patient appropriately to be able to intervene if the respiratory suppression becomes a problem? So then if we can't predict when the potential for respiratory suppression actually stops, then there can be hesitation to administer methadone. For patients, hearing that they're going to receive or already received methadone can be concerning, and that's because many people associate it with opioid use disorder, like heroin use. The reality is that the responsibility falls on the anesthesiologist to explain why this is a medication that can be safely used in an appropriate setting, and most of all, for the patient's benefit, depending on the circumstances. Given the controversy, what does the data actually show in terms of the safety profile of administering methadone to patients as part of an anesthetic plan? There was a very extensive review of existing studies that was published in 2019 in one of the most important journals in the field, but not so creatively named, anesthesiology. I've provided a link in the description below if you'd like to access this article. To briefly summarize this article, methadone significantly reduced patients' post-operative pain scores and also significantly reduced the amount of opioid that patients needed to take after surgery. Finally, they also found that the use of methadone during and after surgery was not associated with an increased risk of side effects. Consistent with these findings, there was another study that was just published, again in the journal Anesthesiology, which found that methadone was safe and effective for patients who were undergoing outpatient surgery with next day discharge. This study specifically compared different doses of methadone that were given intraoperatively to figure out which was the optimal dose for maximizing benefit and reducing any sort of risk associated with its use. For anyone who's interested, I've also linked this study in the description down below. So do I administer methadone for my patients getting surgery? Yes, but not for every patient. It has to be for the right patient and the right surgery. There are a number of side effects that methadone can cause in addition to what I've discussed in this video. So it's not right for every patient. And also some surgeries are just too short or too long or have other reasons why methadone wouldn't be the best medication to give to that patient for pain control. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I go through all of the medications that are routinely used as part of a general anesthetic. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.